In this lesson, we're going to be looking at several others of the TCP IP protocol suite. Let's start with the Internet Protocol version 4. This is the layer 3 network layer protocol used by almost every corporate network and used by the internet. So this is one of our primary core protocols used on all of our networks. Now the IPv4 address is a 32-bit binary address. In other words, it uses a string of 32 ones and zeros to identify a typically an unambiguous destination. In other words, when you want to send a file to a file server, you want it to go to a very specific file server, so this address must be unique and unambiguous to identify that file server uniquely. So we have a 32-bit binary string, and we see that uh, about the second line down here on the slide. But off to the left of that, what we see is the dotted decimal notation for that same IP address. So the binary is to the right, the dotted decimal, something us humans can understand, something that might look more to us like an IP address is off to the left. Below that, what we see is what we call the subnet mask. Now, if you'll notice, in binary, the subnet mask is a string of ones followed by a string of zeros. And in this case, this subnet mask is what we call a slash 24 mask insider notation. That's classless interdomain routing notation. And what that slash 24 designates is that the first 24 binary bits in this subnet mask are ones. And if the mask has to be 32 bits, that says that there are eight remaining binary bits that have to be zero, because we only have those two choices. It's either turned on as a one or it's turned off as a zero. Now what this mask identifies to the routing system that also is a layer three network function is which part of this address 192.168.10.83 represents the network that the computer node, in this case a destination node, might be on. And the portion that is masked by zeros identifies which host or node on that network the destination is. So it's kind of like a boulevard and the house number. The boulevard is the subnet ID, and the house number is the host ID. The boulevard is identified by that string of ones in the subnet mask, and the house number is identified by the string of zeros in that subnet mask. An IP address is incomplete without both the IP address and its subnet mask. We don't understand anything about that node without knowing its subnet mask. So anytime you identify a node, you statically assign an IP address to a node, you must provide at least these two pieces of information. Now, typically, when you're configuring a node on an IP network, you will also need two other pieces to actually make it functional. Those first two, IP address and subnet mask, are essential, and the node simply will not operate without those two pieces. If you give it those two pieces, it'll operate on the network, but only on its local subnet. If you really want to operate on the internet or a larger corporate network, then you'll also need a default gateway, which is the IP address of the router that this node will attach to. So your default gateway is a router's IP address that is your path to all other networks, and that's your default gateway. And then the next thing almost all IP clients are going to require is a IP address for a DNS server. And because it's so important to have this DNS service available, very often you will identify not one but two DNS servers. One is the primary, the preferred, and then the second one is an alternate, just in case that preferred server is unavailable. So what is DNS? DNS provides us name resolution to the IP address for that computer's name. Humans do not understand IP addresses nearly as well as they understand friendly names. So if I'm trying to save a file to my file server 1, I have no idea intuitively what the IP address is for file server 1. But I do know his name is file server 1. So I type in, I want to send this to file server 1. Well, DNS is the service that converts that friendly name that is intuitive to us humans, File Server 1, into the IP address for File Server 1. So 
So it's a database of these mappings of friendly name to the IP address. And almost all nodes will need at least one and ideally two IP addresses in order to function properly on a larger network. Here we see the family of IPv4 IP address classes. We have a class A, B, C, D, and E. Now on corporate networks and on the internet, these nodes are all identified by IP addresses out of classes A, B, or C. These ranges, class A is 1 to 126, B is 128 to 191, and class C is 192 to 223 in the first octet of the IP address. These ranges are the ranges of IP addresses that you can assign to nodes on networks. Now, class D is reserved for a special protocol called multicast or Internet Group Management Protocol, IGMP. And in this case, a multicast protocol will send one data stream out from a source computer and it will assign class D IP addresses to any number of nodes, client computers that opt in for this particular transmission. So suppose we have a meeting that I've recorded and I want to send it out to 10,000 clients. I don't want to build a TCP session to every one of these clients because of all the overhead associated with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a multicast transmission and I'm going to identify to these 10,000 clients, we're also going to bind a second class D IP address to your network interface card. And we're going to pick a number, let's say 226.0.0.19. And I'm going to give that same IP address to all 10,000 recipients that I want to receive this video. And then I'm going to send my video stream out to that same IP address. And the routing system will duplicate and distribute these frames to those 10,000 IP addresses that are all that same number that I identified. So that's the nature of multicast. So therefore, typically it's an application that sends those IP addresses or assigns those IP addresses to nodes. Finally, that class E IP address is experimental and generally we can't assign anything out of that either. So the class D and E aren't IP addresses we generally would assign to nodes statically or by DHCP, but class D is generally assigned by application and class E is generally not assigned at all. Down below we see a series of IP address ranges that are defined for private networks and generally are not usable. The first three are not usable on the public internet. So all the routers on the public internet are configured to discard or drop any packets with a source or destination in any of these three ranges, the 10 dot, the 172.16 dot, and the 192.168 dot. These are private address spaces to be used behind corporate firewalls. Automatic private IP addressing is an address that gets automatically generated if your node, your client node, does not have an IP address available, it will make one up out of this range. Again, these are not routable. Now, the first three are routable on private networks. This fourth one, 169.254.0.0, is not routable at all because there isn't a default gateway option with automatic private IP addressing. Therefore, we can't find our way through a router. And finally, the 127 IP address range is defined as diagnostic, and this is where we get our loopback address for testing purposes, 127.0.0.1. That's our loopback address. So these are families of IP addresses that are probably some of the more important ranges you should be aware of.